this helmet and put it on. Legionaries! Salute your new centurion! So, Rise of Rome is the story of a soldier, just an everyday soldier named Marius. It was developed by Crytek, and you know that they are the kind of people that developed um, the s Crisis games, one of the best looking games uh, pretty much to ever come out. Crisis 2 and Crisis 1 to stay have the best engines and can mount some computers still. So, the Crytek engine itself is very excellent. You play as a soldier named Marius, uh, and you're the menu here, you know, it's kind of confusing a little bit. The timeline is story, right? And the gladiator section of the menu is for multiplayer, and that's where you cooperatively fight uh, hordes of enemies. And the hero is just you upgrading your hero. Uh, the game looks great. Even the menu is well animated. I mean, these are no regular menus. There's shadows. There's a, a lot of music to it. The trees have intense foliage. In, and you will be able to tell by just watching the game that it's it's very detailed. It, the Crytek engine is excellent. And running this on PC, you probably, you know, give it for a run for its money, even to this day. This game came out around 2014, 13, and uh, it was just uh, you know, groundbreaking for its time. Uh, the Xbox, it was put on the Xbox One kind of show off what the Xbox One could do. Uh, and everyone had, like, very rough expectations at the launch of the system. And, you know, this is one of those games that just shows off just how good it can be. Uh, from the voice acting to the facial animations to the reactions of the characters. I mean, everything is presented in such a way that it, it's super impressive. There's shadowing effects, and the beginning of the game just comes with you killing this guy, and you're like, okay, what's going on here? Uh, so the story goes uh, that this is Emperor Nero, and this is the person that has been causing uh, our boy Darius all this trouble. But unlike, you know, other games, besides maybe like uh, God of War, it starts with him coming back to life, right? And and then it cuts to, you know, where he started out, why he did these things. And and everything is presented to what basically he's resurrected as a kind of um like the spirit of Damocles, right? And Damocles is uh the god of revenge, right? And this go these two gods bicker, and it really does show like a higher psychological power. These are Greek beings above humanity, and she basically says, "Let him have his revenge until the time is right, and then we will kill him again." So they launch this revenge plot for him against all the people that wronged him. And uh, first, we're going to highlight before I go deep in the story. We'll get to that in a second. The gameplay is interesting. Basically, it's it's very basic brawler things, right? You can deflect a. And then you attack with axe, and uh, you can press Y to do special attacks. You can also do this thing with right bumper where you hit the ground with your shield and you slow down time, and you can attack people a bunch of times. And this is pretty cool. The issue is that there's only a few execution animations, and a lot of this this stuff that you're hearing, this is a boss battle, so I shouldn't even <laughs> really show that, but it's fine. Um, and a lot of it's just countering and pressing A or X. To execute enemies and when you execute enemies when they're able to do so it'll be blue to dodge and then red is a uh, killer execution and as soon as it starts out uh you do a little training it doesn't just throw you into melee combat though this is the kind of melee combat that could probably be done and figured out by yourself it decides to uh throw you in the story where it's showing you you know how he became this or how marius became this soldier uh and you meet your dad, and he's this, this wise thinker. He's an old soldier. He's well-respected. And he he basically says, welcome home, because, you know, Marius has been on tour, you know, doing soldier things for a long time. And he's, he's you know, glad to see his son. So they greet each other and his mom. And they did a very good job capturing the emotional uh, voice acting for this. These characters didn't work very well. There's a long pauses in between. I mean... This is, it's like a movie. It's very well polished. You can see the shadowing effects here and the animation. Um, and the facial animation is just just excellent. A very good reason and way to show off uh, these effects. 
right? And even the water effects in the background are very excellent. And again, you can really tell that these characters were sat in this voice booth and really tried their land out a lot. And after he meets his mother and father, and I'm not going to show it here, but you go in a little tutorial where your dad shows you to fight, and you fight your dad, and he shows you how to block and deflect, and all that. And, you know, that happens, and then... I'm, I'm going to ruin this part here, because I don't know if anyone's going to pay attention to the story, because a lot of it's just hack and slash. It's not the best story ever, but... Uh, someone betrays your father and murders him, and then you basically become so angry... Uh, that you join the army again to join the Legion, and you go on this one-man quest, right? And at this point, uh, the Roman Empire is fighting these, uh, barbarians. They are like, savages from the east and west that, you know, just exactly, you know, piercings in their chest and, like, real angry voices. They're basically Vikings. And this is the war you're starting, and he's, Mario starts out being really mad, upset over the death of his father and mother, and he's just on this quest, and someone has told him that these barbarians are the people that killed his father. Um, and throughout the game, you can actually upgrade your skills, uh, your XP, basically XP grants you other things to unlock other executions, because there's only like five or six executions when you start, and it gets old pretty quickly, because executions are going to be the way that you finish most of the uh enemies off it's quicker at like the multiplayer addict you also uh get to take the skills you learned from single player in your rank and you take those in the multiplayer where you can play co-op against enemies uh unfortunately though this does not relate to the story at all you're just some dude in fact some of the people that you play against in the story itself are in the multiplayer and they all have different voices and armor it's cool but it is kind of weird that it's not attached to the story. But again, this is just beating the crap out of people in arenas. And that's just that's cool all the time. And upgrading your character is a reason to keep going. Um, so this is showing off some of the executions here. Uh, and timing, the blue is X. The yellow is, you know, Y. And then B is red, right? So these are the kind of things that you'll be getting into in combat. You'll be stunning enemies. You'll be attacking them in these combos, and you'll be trying to hit these mushroom masks. Now, you can just completely screw all these up and do whatever, uh, but you will get your XP bonus a lot higher. Instead of 200, it'll be like 2,000. And with these, you upgrade your combat ability, you upgrade your slow-mo, you upgrade your weapon hits, you gain the ability to attack multiple foes at once. And I've seen many reviewers attack this game. It's like, oh, it's too simple. It's just pressing these buttons and, you know, watch animations pan out. Yeah, but... In the later levels, especially in the hard difficulty, and I recommend putting it on at least hard when you start, these attacks and these boss battles with these multiple foes, I mean, this isn't some game where there's one or two people like this. I mean, there's times that you'll be fighting like 10 to 15 people at once, and you will feel overwhelmed, right? And without these upgrades, you will die. The good thing is, when you go in this execution kind of thing, it does pause the enemies around you, but only that split second, and they keep attacking you right after that. Uh, it, that is kind of stressful, and it is very overwhelming. The enemies are relentless, they'll charge you, they'll push you into walls, they'll chase you down the entire level, and they counter you well. And if you mess up a counter, it'll take a significant part of your health to lose focus. Again, focus is your slow-mo, and when you do use focus, it lasts like 3 seconds. Using focus is only really useful for people with shield enemies, and you think that would give you a to move faster, but the shield enemies can actually block all attacks. You actually have to evade them. And he... Is this terrifying individual, right? Everyone that runs into Marius on the battlefield, uh, especially when he gets resurrected, if this is his Damocles armor, is his entity, they believe that he's the god of revenge, right? Because this is, you know, Roman Greek times. People were stupid a lot. They believe that, you know, people could come back to life as zombies and gods, and they wouldn't cry about it. They would just, like, believe it. Like, oh, he's a zombie? Okay, you know, he's a zombie now. Sweet. And this is one of the emperors, and I won't ruin this part of the story, but this guy in particular... It's just the slimiest, gross person. He's like this slim, skinny dude. He's like the son of the emperor, and he likes to torture people. And he's just gross, right? You, he voices, acts, and he actually breaks the peace between the tribes. He causes the barbarian war, and he wants it to happen. Now, he's not a very good uh, combat individual however his brother is this guy is just slimy and you're gonna want to kill him and you can tell right away this is the guy that i'm gonna need to stab this is the guy that's gonna make me feel better after i kill him and 
not just him, but a lot of the villains are very likable. In fact, uh, the barbarian villains in particular are excellent and very well versed and very likable. And again, they created these characters in such a way that they're very believable. It's almost like a movie, and these aren't cutscenes that you just throw away. Like, a lot of times you want to press A to skip the scenes, but these cutscenes in Rise are so, you know, obviously well animated and acted that I just watch every single one of them. And, you know, I'll give this game like a 7.5, we'll go like the old game informer scale, because it does have its, you know, moments where it costs a little monotonous. But the story arc and the upgrades abilities, it's like a dollars now at GameStop, there's no reason not to get it. Like I said, 7.5, definitely worth it, and it's a gorgeous game. So, uh, I check it out, uh, Rise Sun of Rome for Xbox One, and only Xbox. Alright, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks.